Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Common Sense Academy. Today, we're going to cover the story of a sovereign citizen YouTuber who went to jail and is now facing trial down in Florida. Thank you for joining my show today. I'm your host, Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Most importantly, subscribe. I'd like to get to 10,000 subscribers. Most of my viewers are not subscribed. If you go ahead and subscribe, uh, it's not going to hurt you. And you help me get to 10,000, it's a free way to support the show, and I will get new features for from YouTube. Now, before we watch this video, perhaps the real reason you came here, the real reason you're watching this show is because you like to sit down, you like to grab a beverage, and you like to enjoy the same time sip. Today, I'm using a cup dedicated to a certain viewer of mine. You know who you are, sir. Raise your cup in the air, okay? Cheers. Kampai. Uh, danka. What, how do they say it in Russian? Um, Nostrovia. Let's go, pens, because it tastes better when we sip together. Cheers. Okay, let's watch the video, and then I'm going to run through the, the, uh, the latest news story on this character here. We're starting with breaking news at 11. Charlotte County deputies have arrested a man who is no stranger to law enforcement. You might remember NBC2 telling you about Ian McGuire. He's the man deputies say filmed a law enforcement investigation and harassed people in April. Well, deputies have been at his Port Charlotte home all morning long, and the scene is only getting bigger. NBC2's Ashley Dyer is live there right now, where we can confirm the FBI is also investigating. But Ashley, does this have anything to do with what happened in April? This does have everything to do with what happened in April. We know that the FBI and the Charlotte County Sheriff's Office are both here right now investigating. They're actually both serving separate search warrants. I'm going to give you a look at the scene right now. You can see they are in and out. They actually just brought out two very large guns. The house that you're looking at, that is Ian McGuire's house where those guns were brought out of. Now we know the FBI just wrapped up their search through his home. And right now it's CCSO detectives that are walking in and out of this house with quite a bit of evidence. I have reached out to the FBI to figure out what initiated their search warrant. I can tell you Charlotte County deputies arrested McGuire this morning on charges stemming from that incident that Amanda was mentioning back in April where he was interfering at a crime scene. They say he was harassing victims, suspects, and witnesses, and he now faces three felony charges because of it. A man we talked to who's very familiar with McGuire says he has multiple restraining orders filed against him from people in this Port Charlotte community. He says at times McGuire will even post videos on his YouTube page mimicking the people who have filed restraining orders. He has a restraining order uh, against him from a, a woman at the farmer's market. Uh, I've seen a video a couple of days ago where he was dressed up as her and talking like her. And he said he was going to use this new character. Uh, in his YouTube videos. <laughs> What's wrong, old lady? That other guy, he's got that video back up. That's just one of those videos the man was talking about that was posted on McGuire's YouTube page just a couple months ago. Now, the corner where we're at here at West Lund Terrace and Crestwood Drive will remain closed for several hours to come. McGuire is in the Charlotte County Jail. His bond is set at $20,000. Again, uh, detectives still inside here. They tell me it's going to be quite some time that they are going to be getting evidence from his house here. So stay with us and we'll continue to bring you updates live here from the scene. I'm live in Port Charlotte, Ashley Dyer, NBC2. Okay, so that was a story um, that ran, I believe, last fall of 2019. He may have initially been charged uh, uh, before that with the restraining orders, this Ian McGuire character who is sort of like a sovereign citizen, First Amendment auditor, cop watcher guy who does YouTube videos. So that video, the news clip that we saw was from last fall, um, 
This is the latest news article that I could find on his case. You can see here, December 13th, 2019, YouTuber turns down plea. So he had been offered a plea. I believe he had accepted the plea and then he turned it down later and he's he gets scheduled for trial. Let's run through this article. You can see Mr. McGuire there, um, Punta Gorda. Charlotte County YouTube personality Ian McGuire appeared in court Friday to turn down a plea offered by the state. McGuire, known for his inflammatory YouTube videos blasting government and law enforcement, is demanding a jury trial for his three Charlotte County cases. He's accused of misdemeanor stalking, witness tampering, violation of a protection order against stalking, excuse me, all that Diet Coke, possession of marijuana, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Defense attorney Kevin Shirley would not divulge the details of the plea, but stated it would have resolved all three cases. However, McGuire elected instead for a jury trial. Let me tell you, sometimes if you get if you get all the cases resolved in one global plea, that attorney probably did a lot of work to put that together, and it may have been a good deal, but I don't know. Maybe he thinks he can beat this case. He is very principled regarding his constitutional rights, Shirley said after the hearing. McGuire believes the state fire violated his constitutional rights and believes pleading to the charges would be conceding otherwise, Shirley said. He stated, McGuire has a lot of support and believed the plea offer was not in the best interest of himself or his constituents. On YouTube, McGuire was known as Hate the State and described himself as a First Amendment auditor who would film public reactions to controversial statements. In June, he was arrested after Charlotte County Sheriff's Office and FBI conducted a joint raid at his home on Westland Terrace, seizing 36 firearms and thousands of rounds of ammunition. McGuire was charged with witness tampering in relation to an April incident on his street, where he allegedly interrupted an aggravated assault investigation, mocking and harassing witnesses on film. The warrant also led to his arrest for violating a protection order against stalking, which had prohibited prohibited him from owning or possessing firearms. The protection order was filed against him after filming a vendor at the Punta Gorda Farmer's Market. In September, McGuire was indicted in a federal case along with co-defendant Breton Osborne, accused of using facilities of interstate commerce to stalk the same victim from the protection order and misdemeanor case. McGuire and Osborne allegedly made harassing phone calls and mailed disturbing packages to the victim, including a dead cat labeled for her grandchildren. McGuire's next court date for his misdemeanor cases is December 20th, and his felony case is set for a pretrial conference on January 14th. His federal case is scheduled for a status hearing on January 13th. Wow, there's a lot to unpack here. Okay, let me just let's scroll up to the top here. First of all, uh, I don't know if any of you have seen that video, that Netflix special called Don't Don't F With Cats. I mean, this dude, this, this dude sent a dead cat to someone. Let me tell you something. The, the, a, a judge is going to lop his head off. Okay. Killing an animal to some people is considered worse than killing a human. I'm not saying that's right. But holy hell, dude, you sent a dead cat? Wow, not freaking cool. I mean, that is, that's the most disturbing and, and upsetting part about this whole thing to me. I'm just telling you. That really, really makes me angry. So uh, let's talk about re restraining orders and protection orders. Um, in, in regards to Second Amendment rights, generally restraining orders and protection from abuse orders in any state is going to require you to turn your firearms over. Pennsylvania is actually an interesting state. You just have to relinquish your firearms. You don't have to turn them over to law enforcement. So you can actually give them to a friend or relative as long as they sign and, and state that they're holding the firearms and that you're not going, the person with the PFA is not going to have access to them. That can be the relinquishment of the firearms, but that's a constitutional, um, that's a constitutional provision in most state laws where if you have a protection from abuse, you can no longer possess firearms at your house. This guy had 36 some firearms, rounds of ammunition. That's a, that's a per se 
uh, violation of the protection of abuse order. He also contacted the individuals who he had a protection from abuse order against, if I'm understanding this article correctly. A protection from abuse order basically says no contact. He's sending dead animals. Now, he sent. it says he sent them to the grandchildren. He was trying to circumvent that no contact order. However, even indirect contact like that is going to be covered from the, the PFA, the Protection from Abuse or Restraining Order. The courts know that people are going to try to circumvent that by going through third parties, sending messages to third parties that then can be carried to the targeted party. Any restraining order is going to specifically state that this indirect contact is a violation so it sounds like he likely violated that order in several ways and a violation of those orders are criminal in and of themselves they are their own criminal charges now the other interesting part about this case is the interstate facilities um, that the facilities of interstate commerce that he used to stock which made this a federal case and I'm telling you, he better be really careful. When you're in federal court, criminal court, they lop your head off, okay? You're in federal court, violated a restraining order, mailed a dead cat. God, that makes me angry. I'm telling you, they are going to lop his head off. I'm sure, I'm sure that plea agreement included jail time. But man, if he loses these trials, he's going to get launched. I'm going to keep a close eye on this. I haven't watched any of his YouTube videos. Um, just sounds like a troll, police troll, First Amendment auditor, anti-government, sovereign citizen type. We see them all the time. Um, you know, it's one thing to go on YouTube and have fun and even advocate against... Um, advocate against big government you may not be a huge fan of the government but um you still got to follow the laws and these are reasonable laws these are reasonable laws that people are asking you to follow interfere and what have i always said about first amendment auditors I support First Amendment auditing when it's done in a safe manner from a distance that doesn't interfere with police activities. It sounds to me like this individual directly interfered in police activities during an investigation. That's why auditors get such a bad name. And the auditors who do that, uh, I believe that they deserve to be shamed. So this is an unfortunate uh, and strange story. Uh, some of you may go on there and check out his YouTube channel. I don't know if it's still up. I may give a peek, but I'm going to follow this because I want to see what happens at his trial. Um, he's looking He's looking at a hell of a legal fight with a couple cases in state court and in federal court. So thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this show. Uh, I'm Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer. This is the Common Sense Academy. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Mostly looking for subscribers subscribers right now trying to get to 10,000. Most of my viewers aren't subscribed. This is a free way to support my channel. Please subscribe. And oh yeah, one more thing. You guys, you know who you are. Let's go Pens. Thank you.